Hi, this is Mohamed Sokat and Manos Brilakis presenting case 165 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of non-ST elevation myocardial infarction in an elderly patient that uh, highlights some of the difficulties with uh, wiring, equipment delivery, and treatment of bifurcation in this group of patients. The patient was an 89-year-old woman who woke up with chest discomfort. She had positive troponins and ST segment depression in multiple leads with ST segment elevation in lead AVR. And she was sent for urgent coronary angiography. On coronary angiography, she did have a high-grade stenosis into the proximal circumflex. There was also some disease into the LAD and some haziness into the distal left main. You can see again here, there's distal left main disease, there's disease into the LAD, disease in the circumflex, and there's also a lesion in the origin of a fairly sizable diagonal branch. There was no significant stenosis into the right coronary artery. So we have a patient with left main, circumflex, and LAD disease who is 89 years old. Patients in the age group have very high surgical risk, and although there was uh, an evaluation by surgery in the cath lab, a decision was made to not offer bypass in this patient. And as a result, we decided to proceed with PCI. Given the potential complexities, we were able to upsize the seat from a 6 to a 7 French radial, and then used an EBU375 guide, workhorse wire into the LED, but then had difficulty getting into the circumflex because of the significant angulation getting into that vessel. And these are some of the solutions for wiring through severe angulation. One of them is to use a polymer jacketed guide wire with a large bend. This is more likely to potentially slide into the vessel. The other one to use an angulated microcatheter, such as the Venture or the Supercross. Use a dual lumen microcatheter, and specifically the over-the-wire lumen of the dual lumen, to point towards the side branch. And finally, to use the so-called reverse guide wire technique, in which a polymer jacketed wire is uh, bent about 3 centimeters from the tip, and then it's advanced past the origin of the angulated branch, and then with, it is withdrawn. As it is withdrawn, the wire can enter into this branch. In this particular case, we then tried a, a, a hydrophilic coated wire, the Samurai RC, which is developed for going retrograde in uh, uh, CTO PCI. And the wire did take the first bend. You can see it's almost 180 degree angulation, but then kept on entering into an atrial branch instead of uh, taking the course going into the circumflex and obtuse marginal branch. Um, we had the gentle manipulations and uh, we were able, after multiple attempts, to actually pull it back and uh, redirect the guide wire into the circumflex. So sometimes uh, being uh, patient and trying uh, gentle manipulations can help to redirect uh, the guide wire into the distal true lumen. If that had failed, the next step would have been to get a microcatheter to get it further down that can uh, allow... Uh, for better support and potentially changing the bend of the guide wire as well. So here it is, we're able to get through and um, then we redirect it, it went to another branch, pulled back and redirect it into the obtuse margin. The next step was to do intravascular ultrasound to confirm that there is significant disease into the left main. So coming back from the LAD and there is some diffuse disease. Um, and then when we measured the area in the distal left main, it was 5.19 millimeters square. So there is significant distal left main stenosis. We predilated the circumflex. And then the next step here is to try to deliver a stent. But we noticed that this obtuse marginal branch had a high-grade stenosis. And we were concerned that we might lose it if we stand it over its origin. So before standing the circumflex, we decided to try to wire it. And given the challenges we had with wire in the circumflex, we used a dual lumen microcatheter, a Suzuki. Two operator maneuver. One operator is advancing the guide wire as the other operator is moving the dual lumen microcatheter back and forth until the guide wire aligns with the origin of the side branch. So this is a trial and error. Again, two operator maneuver, and eventually the wire finds its way 
into the obtuse marginal branch. It uh, subselects some branches, but then with patience and redirection, the wires eventually advanced into this branch. This branch was balloon with a 2.0 millimeter balloon, and then we tried to deliver a a uh, very flexible stand, a 25 by 26 millimeter or zero, but could not make it through. So what to do next? We have the classic problem, which is difficulty delivering a stand through tortuosity into the circumflex. The options include to change uh, the guide, although in this case that's not the best approach because we have already a seven French guide. One can use also a guide extension or an anchoring technique. And we did try actually to use a guide extension. It did not work to deliver the equipment. We did not try an anchoring technique, which will be putting a balloon into the LAD and using that balloon to advance the stand into the circumflex. Another option is to use a different guide wire, such as a support wire or a body wire. And another option is to modify the lesion more with balloon angioplasty, use of plaque modification balloons or atherectomy or intravascular lithotripsy or use a different stand, such as a shorter stand or a thinner stretch stand. We eventually used the Sasuke to advance a wiggle guide wire into the obtuse marginal branch, and that resulted in successful delivery with the same uh, 25 by 26 millimeter or zero stand. So using this wiggle wire that has a wave pattern into the distal segment helped uh, direct the stand into the proximal circumflex. We removed uh, the other guide wire and we deployed the proximal circumflex stand, jailing the obtuse marginal. There was fortunately still flow in the obtuse marginal after the stand was placed. However, there was a, a tighter osteostenosis. Uh, the patient did not have any symptoms or EKG changes, and we did try with the Sasuke and various wires to get back into the OM, but we were unable to do so. So we decided to leave it as is and move back. And when it comes to the stand, we placed it just at the ostium of the circumflex. So the next question is what to do for the LAD. Can there significant stenosis in the proximal and middle AD and the distal left main? And there's also some stenosis in the origin of the diagonal branch, and that is why we inserted the guide wire in the diagonal branch. We decided to stand the mid to proximal LAD and then do provisional standing from the left main into the LAD, jailing the circumflex that did not have significant disease at the ostium. So we predilated uh, um, the LAD, and then we had good flow in the diagonal. We then uh, delivered a 3O by 34, jailing the diagonal branch that had a stenosis, and we were on purpose coming proximal to the diagonal, so we would not have to double jail the origin of the diagonal branch. Going, into, going from the left main into the LAD, again trying to avoid to double jail this diagonal branch. This was a 3.5 by 22 millimeter on extent, and uh, that was successfully deployed. We did proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter balloon, and then did the travascular ultrasound to check the result into the LAD. And there's good stand expansion, good stand apposition, and the left main looks fairly good as well. When we measured the minimum lumen area, it was um, 9.8 millimeters square. So we had a nice final result, no compromise of flow into the circumflex. Actually, the circumflex then comes to the proximal circ, but does not come all the way to the left main or the LAD. But again, nice result, good coverage of the left main LAD. There's still flow into the obtuse marginal. There's still flow into this large diagonal branch, even though it does have uh, an osteo lesion. But we were fairly satisfied with this result. So we have several lessons from this case. The first one is that um, elderly patients, nonagenarians, octogenarians, uh, are best treated with PCI in the vast majority of cases. The second one is that uh, tortuosity, especially if combined with calcium, can hinder both wiring but also equipment delivery. In terms of wire, wiring, we did use a dual lumen microcatheter to wire into a side branch. 
And we could have used an angulated microcaster to wire into the circumflex, but we were able to wire it with a hydrophilic wire. We had difficulties delivering a stand into the circumflex because of the angulation. We tried a guide extension that did not work. We did try a thin start straighten or zero that also did not work. However, when we used the wiggle wire along with the body wire, we were able to successfully deliver the or zero stand and have a nice result in the circumflex. And then when it comes to bifurcations, we actually treated three bifurcations here, all of them with the provisional approach. One bifurcation was the circumflex obtuse marginal, the second bifurcation was the LAD diagonal, and the third bifurcation was the left main. Thank you.